Good evening and welcome to another episode of Dr. Melissa Medicine Woman. I am so glad that you are joining me this evening. What a wonderful day it has been. I am so honored that you've taken time to be with me tonight. And tonight we're going to talk about what is VTE? Well, VTE is venous thromboembolism. Yes, that's a big word. Venous thromboembolism. We're going to talk about what it is. We're going to talk about the symptoms. We're going to talk about what to expect when you're diagnosed with it, what causes it, what some risk factors are, how to prevent it, how we treat it today, and how to recover from it. And this information is very vital and information that could save your life. And so tonight, as we get started, let me go ahead and go through the disclaimer that I have for you here. Uh, so let's see here. <clears throat> this show and all the content are for educational purposes only and not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, prevent, any disease or psychological disorder. A specific physician patient or pharmacist patient relationship is necessary before any medical therapies are initiated. Please consult your physician, your pharmacist, or other qualified healthcare provider with questions about your medical conditions and before starting or using any dietary supplements, herbal remedies, exercise plans, or nutrition plans, because all of that plays a huge role in your health. So who is Dr. Melissa Medicine Woman? So a little bit more about me tonight. So I have over 26 years of experience in healthcare, both in Eastern and Western medicine. I have um, logged more than 52,000 clinical hours. I speak to hundreds of patients a week. I've helped thousands of patients manage their medications, optimize their health, my physician friends call me a D prescriber because I actually pull away unnecessary medication and unnecessary supplementation. I get to the root cause of the problem. So my patients often cause me the root cause doctor. And I'm also, I have a doctorate in pharmacy. So I am your concierge consultant pharmacist. And I am excited to be with you tonight to educate you on what is VTE and what to expect from that. So let's, let's go ahead and get started. So VTE, also known as blood clots, okay? So you may have heard the term blood clots. Now, VTE is a specific dis, um, blood clot that is formed in the deep vein, okay? So it's a deep vein thrombosis. Um, VTE is, is formed in deep vein thrombosis. These are usually in your larger um, uh, lower extremities, your legs, your thigh, your pelvis. Now, a PE, pulmonary embolism, is also considered a venous thromboembolism, and that is when a DVT, a T, so that deep vein thrombosis, has broken loose, and it travels up to the lungs, okay, and then it's a clot in your lungs. Now, the risk, and we'll get more specific into that, um, the risk of developing a VTE is actually very highest after major surgeries, um, a major injury, and if you have heart failure, cancer, you've had a heart attack. So some signs of that of a VTE could be swelling, redness, pain in certain areas, um, hot to the touch. Now, a PE, pulmonary embolism, often can cause sudden chest pain, okay? So you, you might have sudden chest pain or you might have shortness of breath. Now, some of these are kind of more obvious signs. Not everybody is that just is like that, just like a heart attack. And we'll talk about broad that. But a heart attack could be felt like, felt like indigestion, okay? So we'll get more in depth into what is that? What all of the specific risks and signs are. So let's talk about the symptoms first. So the symptoms of a VTE or venous thromboembolism are not the same for every single person, okay? So traditionally, or rule of thumb thought that a, DT, a, a, a VTE or DVT, deep vein thrombosis, could be occurred 
when you have swelling, pain or tenderness, increase warmth to the area, cramping, maybe aching in one area, painful, swollen, um, often the calf or the thigh. It might be red or discolored, but that's, that's kind of what, we, what we've thought of as our traditional symptoms, let's say it that way. Now, not everybody's gonna experience that. So there's different ways that we can, we can test for that. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Now, a PE, that's a clot in your lungs, pulmonary embolism. Excuse me, one second here. Marcy, excuse me. Okay, so a PE, pulmonary embolism, you could have shortness of breath. You could have pain, especially with deep breathing. So if you try to take that deep breath, you might notice that you have pain in your chest. You could have some rapid breathing. You could have an increased heart rate. Now, sometimes, okay, not always the traditional, okay, is that you could have a cough with or without spitting up blood. You could have feelings of anxiety or dread. You could have lightheadedness, fainting, even sweating. So those are some symptoms that people have experienced, but they're not your traditional ones that we have thought of. Now that doesn't mean that if you, so listen to your body. If you have something different, unusual, listen to your body. Let's figure out what the root cause is. Let's get it fixed. And if it's a clot, let's get it fixed right away so we don't cause more damage or harm. And so some things to anticipate when being diagnosed. So if you have these, these symptoms that I've mentioned, then you need to get checked out, okay? And we can do a couple of different tests. Now for the traditional, we do a test called a D-dimer. So a D-dimer is a, it's a blood test and it measures um, a, an amount of a specific substance that's in the blood. And that specific substance is released when the fibrin proteins in the blood clot dissolve. So the test will show high levels of that substance and it could be sus suspected that you have a VTE or venous thrombolism. Now, if your test results are normal and they don't show high levels of that, then, and you don't have any risk factors, you're not experiencing anything else, then it's probably likely that you probably don't have a VTE, okay? The other common way to get tests is an ultrasound. And an ultrasound uses sound waves. Um, and we use those sound waves, we pass over the area that is suspected, and it shows pictures of the blood flowing in your veins, okay? Now, the person doing the test will, will press down in, on the area and see if they can um, make things shift or compress. And if they're stiff, sometimes with clots, they're, they're stiff. And so we can see those waves. Now, an ultrasound technician is skilled and educated in the area of what to look for when using that ultrasound. Just like when we use an ultrasound, you probably heard of an ultrasound for, especially for um, pregnant mothers. So we use an ultrasound to go and see the baby. So this ultrasound is, is same type of machine and it's used to see if you have a blood clot. Now there's also um, a CT scan. So we can do a picture, a CT scan, and we can take pictures of your blood vessels, of your legs, your lungs, and we can see if you have a clot forming, okay? Once again, a, a specialized technician who reads that CT scan and a radiologist can check to see if you do have a blood clot or not, okay? There's other imaging tests that we use as well. Sometimes, um, sometimes an x-ray will show but it just, it just depends upon how sophisticated the software is. So those are just some, those are some ways that we can 
that we can see if a clot has formed or not, okay? So next, let's look at causes. All right, so causes and risk factors. So VTE is caused, as we talked about earlier, especially after major surgeries, okay? Now, when you have a deep vein thrombosis, let, let's, de let's delve down into exactly what it does. So a venous thrombolism occurs in the veins that carries the blood to the heart, okay? So the veins are carrying the blood up to the heart and a DVT may obstruct, um, may occur in the flow of the blood. And what it does is it slows down the, the flow of the blood slows down in your body, okay? Especially in your deep veins. So you have several different types of veins. Now, these are the deep veins that we're talking about, the ones that you don't usually see from the surface. They're not ones that you can see. Um, they're, they're deep inside of you, okay? Now, if something damages that blood vessel lining or the makeup of the blood changes, then that's when it makes it easier for a clot to form, okay? So we talked about surgeries being a risk factor. Now, when we look at the cause of a pulmonary embolism, now a pulmonary embolism is what happens is that deep vein blood clot that was that formed in the deep vein or lower, usually lower extremity. Now I have had clients that have gotten a, a, deep, a deep vein in their, in their arm, okay? So they have gotten it in their arm. But what happens with the PE or pulmonary embolism is that deep vein clot has broken loose and it's traveled up to the lungs, okay? And so now you have a clot in your lungs that is blocking an artery in the lungs. Now blood clots can be caused, especially after surgery, trauma, and then they can also develop as a result of inflammation, sometimes an infection, injury like a trauma. Those are the causes, okay? Now, when we get hurt, so our body is very smart, very, very smart. God made our bodies very, very smart. And what happens is that when you injure yourself, you cut yourself, then we have um, thrombin that rushes to the site Okay, and it forms these long protein strands and they clump together with your platelets and they form a clot. Okay, because we want to stop the flow of blood. We don't want you to bleed out. So our body naturally forms clots. Now, sometimes those clots are, they're just, they're small and the side of injury. But what happens is if your vein is damaged, it can trigger this activity and it can form a larger clot, okay? And that larger clot in the DVT, uh, deep vein thrombosis, or that clot that's forming is, can cause a problem because it blocks, okay? It blocks that blood flow. So now we have formed a clot, we've blocked the blood flow and that's a problem, is now the, the clot is so big that the blood can't get around it, okay? And so we're blocking the flow of the blood up to the heart, and that's a problem. Now, I said we would talk about risk, okay? So risk factors, most number one, surgery, okay? Risk factor for getting a venous thromboembolism, surgery. So there's things that we do for preventative that, um, we, we have in our programs, we have in our data. So if, if you are have upcoming surgery of one of these things I'm going to talk about, make sure that there is prevention in place for VTE. So hip and knee surgery, orthopedic surgeries, very, very common happens a lot. Elective surgeries, Hip, knees, hip surgeries, knee surgeries, very, very common. They are actually the highest risk for a VTE. The highest risk. Two of the very most common surgeries 
have the highest risk for VTE. Now there are protocols in place and your physician, each physician is different. I've worked with lots of orthopedic physicians and each one has their own idea. So make sure that your physician, your surgeon has something in place to prevent the risk of VTE because the highest surgeries, knee and hip replacement, highest surgeries. The next one, coronary artery bypass surgery. Okay, that's a big risk for getting a blood clot. Cancers, sur surgeries to remove cancers, neurosurgeries, abdominal surgeries, and other major operations. So I think of any surgery as an event. Okay, now there's some minor surgeries we consider that you're, you're not there very long and you're not under very long. And so the, the risks are a little bit less. However, surgery is a risk. And so some of those big surgeries that I mentioned are the highest ones. So make sure you have prevention in place. And we're gonna talk about that here very shortly. So we talked about how our bodies are very smart. They talk to us and they let us know when things are not right, okay? So listen for those symptoms swelling, shortness of breath, hot to the touch, swollen, inflamed. These are things that you watch for. If you feel different after surgery, ask. Don't just ignore it, ask. It could be a sign of something that we can fix. If you don't take care of it right then, it could lead to more detrimental problems later. Now, the risk of developing a VTE is highest in the first three months, three months after surgery, okay? So you have surgery, day one post-op, very, very high risk, all the way to three months, okay? Now, three months later after that, so six months after your surgery, your risk of developing that blood clot goes down. Now you may have some underlying risk factors. Now, if you have underlying risk factors, which we'll talk about here in just a minute, then that could put you at higher risk. And so you definitely wanna make sure that your surgeon has done something to have prevention in place for your high risk surgery. So here's some conditions that already increase your risk of a clot, okay? Spinal cord injury. So if you've had an injury to your spinal cord that already damages the veins in your body and may cause paralysis and reduce blood flow already. If you have had trauma, such as a broken hip or leg, that puts you at increased risk. Cancer in itself puts you at increased risk of developing a clot, cancer just by itself. Now they have noticed that certain cancers have a higher tendency. So brain cancer, breast cancer, colon cancer, pancreatic cancer have a higher risk of being, putting you at risk for VTE. If you have heart conditions, if you've already had a heart attack or you have congestive heart failure, that puts you at higher risk. If you've had a stroke, if you're obese, if you have varicose veins, that puts you at risk. And added to the list now is SARS-CoV-2. So if you have had COVID-19, you do have a higher risk of developing a clot, okay? If you are sedentary or not moving for long periods of time, which is what major surgeries put you at risk because you have the surgery and then you're recuperating. And so you're not moving around very much. Now we have new protocols in place for hip and knee surgeries. We try and get you up that very first day and that is on purpose. And we do that because we don't want you to have that risk of that clot. And the sooner we can get you moving, the better off, get that blood flow moving. Now, sometimes 
when you're homebound or you're nursing home, you have a, a harder chance to get up and that does put you at higher risk. Age, age puts you at a risk. So just normally every 10 years after the age of 40, your risk of having a VTE almost doubles. Let me tell you that again. Every 10 years after the age of 40, the risk of a VTE or venous, venous thromboembolism almost doubles. That has to do with changes in our hormones, changes in our activity level sometimes, sometimes different, but age puts you at risk. Now, if you have a family member you have a family history. So somebody in your family has already had a, an occurrence. They've already had a clot. There has been studies out that have shown that there are mutations, so to speak, in our genetic makeup. And these have shown to put you at increased risk. So if you have a sibling, especially brother or sister, who has had a clot, then this almost more than doubles your risk than the general population of getting VTE. So you have a family history. So make sure you let your physician know before they do the surgery that you have a family history of VTE, okay? Now, sometimes um, our ethnicity plays a role and we have noticed that, especially in the United States, that African-Americans have the highest rate of VTE. Now there's other studies that show that Asian-Americans have less risk. Now let's talk about pregnancy or not pregnancy, okay? So specifically women and hormone birth control. So hormone birth control therapy has gotten better than it was when it first came out. When it first came out way back in the 1950s, what happened is, actually, I think it was a little before that, biologies, um, the risk of clots was very, very, very high, okay? The risk of clots is still high with hormone or, uh, hormonal contraceptives whether that's birth control pills, whether you're using um, a device that secretes hormones to, to impair pregnancy from happening, it does put you at a higher risk for developing a blood clot. Also, if you're pregnant, so giving birth puts you at a higher risk, especially the first six weeks after giving birth. Now, if you're put on bed rest, then they, you have twofold. Um, risk of getting a blood clot. So just keep that in mind, activity, pay attention to your body, listen to your symptoms, okay? Now, we've talked about all of that ugly stuff of what it is and all of this bad stuff. So let's talk about prevention. So prevention, there's things in place for pregnancy, for surgeries, Talk to your physician about them. Keep moving. That is one of the best things you can do. Keep moving. Get up after your surgery as soon as you can. Do some your therapy. Get moving. That is going to be so much better for you than just laying around. Laying around, higher chance for VTE. Sometimes applying pressure. So compression stockings may be recommended. In the hospital, they may use different stockings that they put on you that compress, they expand and compress um, to keep the blood flow, the circulation in your lower extremities, okay? Now, sometimes, especially for surgeries, we give you what's called a blood thinner. Now, these blood thinners could be things like heparin, warfarin, it could be Lovenox, it could be a Pixaban, it could be Xeralto, it could be um, Rivaroxaban, it could be a lot of different things. There's a couple of different ones on the market now. 
that we give you. And these are part of the protocol of prevention. Prevention, okay? Now, some of these same medications are used to treat. Their dosages are different for some, whether it's treatment or prevention, but they may be the same medication. They're often the same medication, okay? So make sure that you're going by and doing your treatment method, um, paying attention to the prevention. If you are placed on one of these blood thinners, uh, these anticoagulants or a thrombin inhibitor, they are things that will thin out, so to speak, I like to say thin out your blood. Um, they make it easier for the blood to slide up and down the vessels and less likely for a clot to form. Now, your body, so let's say you got a clot, okay? You got a clot and you're now placed on one of these um, treatment medications. Your body over time will dissolve that clot. It could take up to a year for your body to dissolve that clot. You have what's called macrophages, like little Pac-Man. And it goes in there and it eats away that clot a little bit at a time. Now, we, what we want to do is while we allow your body to heal the clot on its own, we want to make sure that your blood stays slippery enough and slides up and down those vessels so that you don't form another clot or that that current clot doesn't break loose and go up to your lungs or to your brain, cause other problems, okay? So these medications for treatment, some same medications for prevention, they're just different. The prevention medications, they're shorter term, they're because your highest risk after a surgery during that first three months. So if you're just on it for, for, for prevention, then usually, it can range anywhere from actually a couple of doses of a medication all the way up to about um, three months, sometimes a smidge longer, but mostly three months. Now, if you do get that clot, then it's gonna range anywhere from six months to a year if it's your first time and you have no other risk factors. Now, if it's your second event, then we're gonna look at putting, putting you on at something for a longer term, okay? So those are some medications that make it so that it gives your body time to heal. Now, sometimes we have to go in and put in a filter. So the filter, what the filter does is it catches the blood clots. And over time, um, what happens is that, oh, pardon me that filter catches those blood clots. Now it's not, gonna, it's not gonna prevent new clots from forming, but we place that filter in a certain area and it catches those clots. It's a mesh filter um, and they can go in and, and clear it. So that might be something that if you're getting a lot of clots or if you have an underlying condition, there is some conditions, other conditions that can make it um, where you would need to be on blood thinners. And we're not going to get really into that because it, what it does is, well, actually, let's talk a little bit. It puts you at risk for developing a VTE. So we talked about some, but there's other things like if you have an overactive system where your, your body actively produces a lot more clots, um, pulmonary Hypertension puts you at higher risk for developing clots. So sometimes we, hit, we put you on medication for that. Antiphospholipid syndrome, we put you on blood thinners because you have a higher tendency to develop blood clots, okay? And there's, there's a couple other conditions as well. So we've talked a lot about what VTE is, the symptoms to look for, what to expect when being diagnosed, things that put you at risk, ways to prevent it and ways to treat it. So if you do happen to have a VTE, go through, follow your, the advice, okay? Take the medication as prescribed. There's side effects to certain medications. A lot of these medications will make you bleed easier. 
So if you do start noticing a lot more bruising or you bruise easier to begin with, please let your physician or pharmacist know right away. Um, things to watch out for, be careful with things that are sharp, knives, razors, scissors. Be careful going up and down stairs, ladders. It's not an ideal situation for you when you're on blood thinners because if you do fall or you cut yourself, you have a higher chance to bleed internally. Now, these can also cause you to bleed, have blood in your urine, maybe a brownish colored or blood in your stool, dark tarry looking. If those things happen, you need to seek medical advice right away. That is not, um, that is not good. It's a sign that you could be bleeding internally. And stationary, so sitting down. So when we're traveling around, and you're on a plane for a long time. So here's some things, some tips I wanna give you. Now, if you can get up and move about, that's great, but it's often difficult to move around the cabin if it's full or there's a lot of people. So what you can do is make sure that you are um, kind of fidgeting in your seat, moving your, your feet, even just pumping your feet, wiggle your, your toes, um, flex your calf, flex your ankle, make sure that you're getting movement. That way you're getting blood flow and circulation while you're sitting there on that flight, okay? Do that when you're sitting at your desk. You're sitting for long periods of time that puts you at increased risk of developing that clot. And so we wanna make sure that we give you less chance to develop that clot. So making sure that you're following your body's signs and symptoms. If it's speaking to you, listen. Remember, you only get one body and it's very smart. It talks to you. We just need to listen. We often don't listen. We put it out of our mind and we don't do it. So these are some things to help you with how to save your life and not get a VTE. So pay attention. If you're up for surgery, Make sure you ask the questions of your surgeon. What do they do for, for, for prevention of VTE? And so I have a special just for you watching. Let me bring it up for you here. For those of you watching, I want you to go to drmelissabavizan.com forward slash TV. And I have a special drmelissabavizan.com forward slash TV. Just for you watching my show tonight, there's a couple of things on there for you. So make sure you go and check that out. And I wanna say thank you so much for all of you who have joined me this evening. It has been a pleasure speaking with you. Remember, you only get one body. Take care of it now. Live your best, healthiest life.